I am here with Corey as always. Say hi, Corey. Hey, how's it going? And the game you see on my screen here is Black Belt for the Sega Master System, which is one of the big gameplay influences for the game we're working on, Damon Claw. I just thought it would be entertaining if uh, Corey and I made a video where both of us get to play the game, Corey having never played this in his youth. I hadn't looked at this game for decades, so it would be kind of nice to revisit and see if we can get any ideas for things we can do and things we should not do by replaying this game. I was originally designing it to make a retro classic Amiga game, and so I wanted to do a gameplay style that wasn't that common, especially on the Amiga, and that would be relatively fast and straightforward to program, and this game quickly came to mind as a game that I very thoroughly enjoyed in my youth with very clean, simple gameplay. Anyway, I should start playing. Okay. But we will soon see that there are some things that this game does very well, and some things that it suffers. Part of it is just because it's a very old 8-bit game. Uh, there are things that we can avoid. The, the vast majority of things that cause frustration in this game are things that can very easily be avoided with modern technology. Just things like collision detection right. being unfair, but also some game design decisions were really, uh, in my opinion, unnecessarily frustrating. Like you just <laughs> saw there, my, my, often my, my fists and my feet will go through enemies because that's how the game designers decided uh, that's not how you're supposed to hit the guy. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. Um, I noticed too, uh, I think the power-ups coming by is placed, like level placement, as opposed yeah. to like you earning them or something, that isn't it? That could very uh, well be. That, yeah, that's true. In Damon Claw, it is earned. So uh, it, it's in general, that's a, that's definitely a thing. In Damon Claw, there's going to be way less of a necess uh, necessity for memorization of super specific patterns. I'm not doing that right. here. Uh, but again, yeah, <laughs> this guy is invulnerable the vast majority of the time. There we go. Um, yeah, so what was I talking about? Yeah, so... Oops, yeah, yeah like so this, that pattern sort of... seemed new to me, but I could be totally wrong. I haven't practiced this much. It's... Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe they mix it up a little bit, but I yeah. noticed... At least with the first level, it, they yeah. always seem to be in the same spot or something. Right. Yeah, um, that's very likely true. Oh yeah, this guy, you, it's best to stay on the ground and just catch him when he jumps like that. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I shouldn't say best, but it's safest, because if you jump kick at him, there's a good chance that, uh, that he's going to hit you. Oh, I, I should also mention, uh, mention that for some reason, due to, I guess, my sound card or drivers or whatever, when I run this emulator and try to Skype, which is what we're doing now for Corey's audio, and so Corey can see my screen, my voice cuts out constantly if I have the sound for the game turned on. Right. And, uh, so, unfortunately, that's why you're not getting any game sound while we're playing. Um, mm -hmm. But... Uh, Hopefully, when Corey's playing in the next batch of videos we record, you'll be able to have game audio quietly in the background as well. Yeah. And then for the final edited version of this video, I'll definitely... All right, you, you're being annoying. <laughs> he a takes tank. a lot of hits, yeah, this guy. Really yeah, he really And I'm playing unnecessarily safe because it's pretty much the end of the level after him, I think. Or very close. Maybe not. There we go. I like with that guy, since he's bigger, like how yeah. they deliberately didn't give him a hit frame, you know, like like he's yeah. just taking all yeah. the blows, you know? Yeah. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to save state right now. All right. Let's see here. Oops. I forgot this pattern already. I've been starting to practice some of these boss fights and levels. I actually found the second boss to be easier than this guy. Yeah, you know? that's definitely um, true. Yep, this guy, until you learn some really specific patterns, he's actually harder than all the bosses uh, up to the point of Oni, who is an absolute uh, annoying monster. There we go, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> that's why the game paused, it's just saving state. 
when this game switched to the first boss fight and these characters were so giant compared to what we were used to with the Atari and the 8-bit Nintendo, those are really big 16-color uh, fighting character sprites. Jump in. I did get some time to practice, but I didn't make it through the whole game, so we'll see how well I can do here. I adapted right, to um, kicking more so than punching with the regular enemies. But... Yeah, on the earlier levels, it's definitely handy. It is a slightly longer range attack, but as you uh, may have seen right there, uh, fellow viewers, it's you do get it's a slightly longer. Uh, the the attack takes a little longer to get out, so it does make it a little more likely you're going to miss the chance to jump and grab the stuff. Right. And then in later levels, the enemies come at you so fast using punch. Uh, you, you can punch forward and then turn around and punch behind you much quicker than you can do with attacks. Right. And I say much quicker, we're probably talking at a, a difference of two or three frames. But in this game, that makes a huge difference, especially in the later levels, because it is a very fast action game. Yeah. I noticed, too, the little impacts that appear on the guys uh, when yeah. I first played i thought that was like a fireball shooting out yep. of my character and it's not it's it's just yep. it's supposed to be an impact flash which yep. obviously probably shouldn't move with the guy but i don't know exactly yeah i had the same exact uh impression i remember uh all those decades ago the first time i played the game it really looked at first like those were like little fireballs flying out of your feet and fists right well, the other thing that's odd is very often they do appear behind your fists, uh, behind your character instead of in front, mm -hmm. which is uh, very odd. Yeah, I... Another thing, too, is I couldn't quite figure it out while I was first playing, but mm -hmm. I noticed that if you stay still like this and you don't advance, guys will just yeah. keep pouring in. Yeah, and there's an infinity of them. Yeah. Does that... Is this still advancing the level, or do I have to move? No. Oh, no. Okay. The, the progress in the level is 100% based on your getting from the left of the level to the right of the level. There's yeah. literally infinite bad guys until you progress to the next part of the level that triggers a change in, like, spawning a sub-boss uh, or ending the level. And that's definitely not... In Damon Claw, there's a finite number of enemies. Uh, they don't just keep appearing infinitely if you stand still. You'll just be bored if you stand right. still. <laughs> and you won't make any progress. Yeah, this game gives you no break. I mean, I mean like, you don't right, get yeah. any downtime it's the whole perfect. level. I mean... Which I, I like, and like Damon Claw would play like that if you were speedrunning it, or but you can always stop if you need to rest for a second without pausing. If you've killed the enemies on screen, you can chill for a second if you need to. Right. You know what I mean, so yeah, that would be another difference. Yeah, I, I think I think that helps a little bit um, to give the occasional break i mean i don't know how much yeah. of that we want to do but yeah well that's the great you thing know. it's if you want the frantic non-stop gameplay it'll be there but like in the real world if you've killed every well i'm yeah. not speaking from personal experience right. but if you killed everyone in your general vicinity then you can take a little breather if you want to which typically in a game is going to be like a half a second at a time so th there's there's no harm in offering that. It's just uh, they made that design decision to have enemy spawning based entirely on how many are on screen in a timer to make sure that there's always a certain number on screen. Right. Uh, you have to hit him with a punch, I think, to uh, for the final hit. Yeah. There you go. Nice. I love how you were ducking and then you just stood up and smacked him right in the <laughs> face. Like, that looks great. And uh, almost no sprite flicker during those battles. Very impressive. Um, yeah, it shows what could have been done uh, yeah. on the SMS with that sort of gameplay. Yeah. Uh, had someone taken it a step further or something, yeah, you know? Yeah, that genre pretty much didn't even exist at that point. I'm, I'm gonna pause. Okay. Just because it's, I'm still quite unpracticed, and this uh, 
if you get caught in a bad uh, pattern or get sloppy, you can really suffer. You could die quickly, and there's only right. there's only three get, three lives and no continues in this oh, game. I hated this guy. I hated the whip guy, yeah. yeah, or whatever he had. Oh, there's a much worse red ninja whip guy in an upcoming level. He, yeah, he yeah. can super rapid fire his whip, and you're uh, it's really dangerous. You just have to get the heck out of there, and you don't try to absorb the hit and attack him back, because he'll he'll just keep stuffing up your ability to counterattack by hitting you with rapid whip attacks and drain your yeah. meter, drain your health incredibly quickly. Oh, ouch! So yeah, just so you know, you can punch and block the uh, projectile weapons in this game, which is nice. That is what you want to do when someone throws knives at you. Is you punch, punch it the knife with your bare That's knuckles. Up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, you, you know, it's <laughs> it's not it's not the game's fault. You're not a black belt, you know. Right. I mean, if, you just got to work on your chi, and uh, all right, nice. That went smoothly. All right. And the other nice thing is you do get a full meter. By the way, my brother and I used to call this guy the Human Ninja Turtle. Look at his face. <laughs> Look at the yeah, profile of yeah. his face. Why is Ricky rendered so realistically? The player character. With right. his face, or relatively realistically, and then this guy's got this black outlined, curved uh, tur ninja turtle snout instead of a nose, and no yeah. shading in his face. It's certainly this was done and by two that combined artists. with the outfit and everything. This he's the most ridiculous looking boss, I guess. Uh, yeah. Oops, I'm gonna like. Is he like that? Is he supposed to have? Is yeah. that like Ooh. some kind of? wrestling belt or something that he's got it on? It certainly that looks it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this was the 80s, you know? It was all about right, the yeah. wrestling belts and the Michael Jackson jackets and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there, there goes the uh, Human Ninja Turtle. Hey, they actually at least had him explode. <laughs> and, Little uh, fatality things going on. Yeah, which there very much would have been as we discussed in the previous video. There's, This game was originally a Fist of the North Star, so it was all about fatalities in right. the original uh, version of the game before it was uh, changed for uh, Western, uh, for the Western market. I noticed too with the, you know, they this is when they introduced sort of the jumping guys and, uh, yeah. or some of them jump, but yeah. They don't really ever attack you when they jump. They just, it just kind of yeah. throws you off where they're they're kind of getting out of the way for a moment, and that's, that's pretty much. I'm pretty that. sure that if you also happened to be in the air, but that's one thing when you play this game, uh, it's not a good idea to be jumping around all the time because you're going to miss a critical invulnerability uh, or uh, health replenisher. So you stay landbound the vast majority of the time until you're fighting a uh, boss or a sub-boss. And uh, yeah, they uh, those guys, I think if you're up in the air and they're jumping, they'll attack you. But otherwise, like if you just arbitrarily jumped up in the air in front of one long before it was in range, yeah. it would probably attack you while it's in the air. That's a guess. Well, um, yeah, let's, let me try that actually. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, they don't seem to... Uh... Yeah, so just, just kind of go like, through like you. Easter bunny and see if any of them ever jump kick. Yeah, nope. These are just Easter bunnies. It's just to throw wow. off the time, like you said. Interesting. I can uh, skip right through the level. And you can punch those knives. Don't forget. Right. Nicely done. There you go. <laughs> And I guess these guys have like face paint or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they're ultimate warrior wannabes. <laughs> oh, yeah, I just love that. oh, I saved it at a you bad spot. You pressed <laughs> And uh, to remind everyone, the reason uh, safe states is so important for this game is you only get three lives and no continue, and it takes quite a few points to earn a new life. Yeah, we wanted first... to make sure we could get through and show oh, okay. most of the game without having to spend too much time replaying levels and things. I don't think you can put... Uh, right. Uh, the final attack uh, can never be a low uh, attack. Right. Yeah, so I was, was trying I was trying to get a, a kick on yeah. him, but 
he he's he's a tough one to just regularly kick I think yep got him a few times there though ah. <laughs> I'm assuming you can punch his um, things out of the way too but I uh, tried to before and it doesn't work yeah. uh, for him which is annoying you need to get a puncher a kick a regular puncher kick in on him I think there we go there you go Whew. No health left. <laughs> beautiful. Well, maybe not quite so beautiful. But... <laughs> but yeah, that's one of the more gratifying uh, deaths of the bosses in this game. And then they, in America, they got rid of the gore and they completely genericized. Like, the, the, these backgrounds were completely different, and they, they were, uh, like, post-apocalyptic cityscapes and stuff like that, with, like, crumpled skyscrapers and all kinds <laughs> of interesting interesting stuff. And then in the uh, um, porting to the U.S., not only did they decide to uh, dumb down the violence and the gore, but they got rid of any aspect of creativity. You know what I right. mean? Like, it's just a solace. You're a black belt. You're going around in Asian-esque environments. Oh, yeah. Don't jump at this guy. You're going around in well, Asian-esque environments. And, I think uh, the the creativity shines a little bit with the bosses and the sub-bosses. Um, but, yeah, yeah, generally, as far as the aesthetic and the setting and the, you know, yeah. it's kind of... I think the sprites yeah. and obviously the gameplay were changed very little, uh, other than the fact that they got rid of the bloody deaths, but the, uh, the environments really took the bad hit. And the, okay, the funny yeah. thing is, if you get the right pattern, which I'm just not good at anymore, I don't remember, you can make a fool of this guy, but uh, like completely stuff him into the edge of the screen and just he has no chance of hitting you ever. But right. it's one of those things. A lot of 8-bit games, it was all about super specific memorization of these uh, really precise timing and controls. And it, it wasn't about combat at that point. It was just about uh, getting those super specific um, patterns in there. Which I definitely prefer a gameplay style that if it's a fighting game, you should feel like you're fighting. You know what I mean? You right. should feel yeah. like that if you would score a hit in real life, uh, uh, then you know. your attack shouldn't go through the character. Yeah, you got it much easier that time. Yep, and I wasn't thinking about it. <laughs> that, right. That's one of those things like muscle memory uh, will mm -hmm. kick in. Some some enemies you just you pound them and then they just fly off the screen and yeah, no idea if they're still alive. Nice job mixing it up between uh, punch and kick. Yeah, I'm trying to get more used to the punching. Uh, yeah. for these guys but you're right it does yeah. give you that little bit of extra time to jump for those power-ups yeah. in these later levels it's a massive difference those extra couple of frames between the time to punch forward turn and punch back as opposed to kicking it makes a huge difference it's amazing though how even level three isn't that terribly hard uh, yeah. but then level four just really ramps it up immediately yeah in general, it's not a good idea to jump at this guy. You can just walk up to him and kick him. Yeah. And they, they missed a really nice opportunity for more screen slicing on that environment that you just left. Yeah, with him, after the initial jump to dodge his uh, lunge, right. it's best to pretty much stay on the ground and use your kick attack and stuff like that kick and punch and just stay pretty close to him. Yeah, back up and you're still taking damage, although it's hard to tell. Good job. There you go. Beautiful. Great. That was a fantastic victory. Very, very nice. It's amazing how quick that fight is, you know, compared to later. He um, does more people. damage than any other boss by far in my experience, especially mm -hmm. if you get caught up in his bunny hop, where apparently his belly is the deadliest thing on the planet. <laughs> right. And it, it is a, a gratifying game once you get past that 8-bit learning curve, uh, which is no joke. It is, It can be really frustrating, 
especially to modern, uh, I'm not doing well here, especially to modern uh, gameplay uh, sensibilities. Yeah, oops, missing mm -hmm. that was a big yeah, mistake. Yeah, this level, Meat level grinder. four, is when it just ramps up, like yep. with the birds and everything, it's like... Yep. And the ninjas do an incredibly good job getting exactly outside the range of your attack, and they can still mm -hmm. slice you with a sword. So, I mean, ah... Uh, and then the other yeah. annoying thing is when you're inside this guy, he can completely decimate your hit points really fast with the really fast. Right there, I was pressing up to jump, and he just refused. Yeah, he almost. Uh, this guy, like, he moves so fast to do that attack, it's almost like he's teleporting or something. Yeah, exactly. So, the yeah, red I, guy. yeah, the red whip ninja. I am. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of sudden changes. Uh, I am definitely using save state states to get through this game because, like I said, three lives, no continues. You can earn lives with points, but I think they do that thing where it takes more and more points to earn each successive life. Right. Save state. All right, there we go. So now I can just get right back to this annoying guy. So yeah, he he can he can repeatedly whip. Uh, so look at this. I'm completely yeah, stuffed up. That is <laughs> very <laughs> frustrating. But anyway, there. And uh, that's the other annoying thing when you've got a bunch of enemies in um, very in kind of a group, then there's no such thing as punching them all quickly enough in succession. The one behind will definitely hit you uh, right. before you can hit him. All right, let me F5. You can't no. miss the invulnerability. <laughs> That's right. a huge mistake. Or, I mean, you can, like I said. if You can get very good at this game where you can compensate for a lot of mistakes, but until you've really played the game an insane amount to uh, get really get that muscle memory for all of the patterns... Yeah, these guys are, are rough. And then just some art decisions were really bad. There we go. I found mm -hmm. a good cheat for this Can't guy. Can't see those. Uh, exactly. What, what Why those on earth? They throw. On the Sega Master System, every last sprite can be 16 color. Why on earth would you make a only black throwing star that's smaller than it needs to be? And just completely blends in with the black crevices in that stone wall pattern back there? Yeah, they've already got the uh, the white on the player character, right, exactly. you know, in his outfit, so they can use that for any throwing object. Right. It should stand yeah. out. But... Now this guy is a monster. Oh, man. This guy I hate. So I'm going to just try to beat him immediately the cheap way. And I'm going to try to get in the better thing when I can, but it's really hard. I've not practiced him enough, and he's just frustrating for all the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. So he is invulnerable the vast majority of the time, and you have this insanely small amount of time to counterattack whether he hits you or not. Alright, level four. Now this is when I start... Uh, start... Uh, <laughs> that, that, that sneak attack guy at the beginning. That's yep. uh, terrible. He's just there to remind you that the objective of almost every game ever is to scroll from the left to the right. Right. You know, just like... <laughs> You should have been going by now. Um, but this did make me really think that in Damon Claw, this and... Um, yeah, I let my son uh, try Damon Claw for the first time in, in uh, a couple of months. And uh, he was playing the first level. And he was just like, oh, this isn't that hard. He could, like, for a while, he was able to just keep walking straight because all the falcons were in the air. Mm -hmm. just And they just kept flying above him. And that really made me think we really need to add that swooping behavior that these falcons have in this level of black belt, right. so that you know they'll they'll swoop down and attack at you if you just uh, try to ignore them. So oh, actually, that guy that, that's, ran away. That's, that's surprising. Yeah, they seem to stay out. Oh man, uh, they seem to stay <laughs> outside the, the fist range. Yeah, so much. That's do. why I keep resorting to the kick. But yeah, you have to be walking aggressively in and do your punch before they swing the sword, which is possible. But if you just stand still, 
and you try to punch them when they get in range, then they're going to stop outside of your punch range, and they're going to slash you with the sword. You have to remember to walk aggressively into them for a split second before you attack. That's one way to do it. Just get to the <laughs> get to the next spawning point, kill the few enemies. That works. Outsmart the game design. <laughs> right. I don't think I could pull that off for the rest of the game, though. Right. And it would have been nice if they had programmed it, uh, but there is a cost to it for performance, which might be why they mm -hmm. didn't, but it would have been nice if they programmed it so that enemies can't just be directly inside each other so much. Right. That would help with a yeah, lot of Yeah, if they did the problems. Hollywood uh, guys hanging back before yeah, they exactly. got their chance to, <laughs> to attack sort of thing. Yeah. Hey, in a 2D world, it makes a lot more <laughs> sense than it does in Hollywood. <laughs> I did notice with the birds, you can do that slight trick of walking forward and ducking. Yes. Um, yep. Yeah, very nice. <sighs> oh, kick. Oh, don't forget to jump kick when you, uh, just in case. I think it would have still been a tiny bit too late with that one, but it was close. <laughs> It's yeah, yeah, and make sure the most important thing early on get ready for that invulnerable, and make sure you're free enough to um, to grab it. It's going to be pretty soon. There, nice. I would say pause and save state. There you go. Very nice uh, duck management of the falcon. <laughs> Uh, like and the a, trick with these some guys, kind of casual game, duck, duck management. Stay on the one far side and just duck and keep rapid punching the ninja. I'm pretty sure that's the way to make easy uh, time with these guys because you'll be blocking the throwing stars. You know what I mean? Right. I mean when they're both there. Now you should just fight him normally, like drop kick him and stuff. It's probably worth a safe state. Nice. Ah. You can get a load state, you know it's coming. And then you can just grab it. Too many guys. He, yeah, he tried to stop you, but at least you got it. So you did a little better than break even, I think. Oof. And you will get a full health replenish for the boss. All right, save state. And you just immediately go to the far left edge and just wait for him to come to you. And just when he's in range, just do punch, get hit, punch, punch, get hit. Punch. So, yeah, yeah. I would lose really state because there's no point in wasting a life. You're right, Adam, anyway. Nice. That's exactly the way. It's sad that this is the only way to beat him. You're doing way better with this than I did. You got the timing a lot better. Nice. Very. That, I've never beat him with that much energy <laughs> left in my life. Yeah. And, uh,. I now call this game, it's not what I used to call it, I don't remember, but I now call this game the uh, Ghostbusters 2016 uh, <laughs> level. But there's, yeah. a, there's a compelling reason why, but I, I don't can't remember what that is at the moment. I, I think it's the, the green city back there. Yeah, there you I go. I think it's maybe that's it. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. That's, yeah. Or maybe these proton packs. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Ouch. All right, so. And the invulnerability, I'm almost certain, is not based on a timer. It's based on how many hits you take, which I like a lot. This level also kind of displays, you know, sort of the quick cheapness they use to replace the environments, because this is just a recoloring of exactly. that other level. So yeah, this was a yeah. very small... Actually, that's a great question. I think this was a cartridge, but the second Master System had both... Oops, nice accidental dodge. <laughs> The uh, it had both a card slot for less expensive games that uh, with a lower memory capacity, and right. then it had the uh, actual cartridge slot for the more expensive games. And this may have been a cartridge, but regardless, I don't remember. That's a really good question. Um, it was not a high capacity memory card. 
That's another right. thing when, when you're playing. Uh, make it a habit to always jump kick when you're trying to do the super jump to collect an item. Because right. the collision box for your extended foot does count. And a lot of times when you otherwise would have missed, uh, you can actually collect it because your leg is sticking out. Mm. I'm getting stuffed up here by these guys. I thought I already fought you two. <laughs> did they show up twice, maybe? Uh, yeah, I think they did, yeah. Ah, see, they're even... Now, now even the sub-bosses aren't as unique anymore. You've had yeah. the same ones more than once. Yep. Yeah. Ah, but they did that in the later level, because they wanted to make sure... You know what I mean? They, yeah. they wanted to make sure... Uh, oh, wow! Perceive. <laughs> this oh. is shocking. We're near the end of the game. It's her and then the, the final boss. But the, the problem is I haven't practiced her at all. I don't remember her pattern. Oh, good! She's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe I spoke too soon. We'll see. Yeah, look, she's, she's never getting hurt. Oh, I think you have to hit her out of the air. To, in order to do damage. Right. Yep, that's the case. That's annoying. Oh, I tried a clever backward mm. jump, but to no avail. Uh-oh. That would be awesome. So, that's interesting. Right now, it's hurting her. But now it's not. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah, the jump kick. Or whatever, yeah. Yeah. Is she taking Maybe... damage? She's not taking damage. Huh. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I have to hit her out of the air now. Wow. And unfortunately, I don't remember how to... Oh, that, that hurt her. Oh, that, yeah. You get a... Low kick. How arbitrary. Her. Suddenly, a uh, uh, smack to the face with a, with a foot does not hurt. <laughs> right. You gotta hit her uh, big toe, I believe. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Those are the kinds of things, th this 8-bit decisions, we'll call them 8-bit decisions, that just are very annoying. The character will be invulnerable 80% of the time. A smack to the face won't do damage suddenly for this or that arbitrary reason. It's not like she put on a, a freaking football helmet or a riot gear visor. Right. So it's just that kind of stuff is really annoying. It's invisible 8-bit uh, shield. Yeah, exactly. I'm um, sad that that fire doesn't animate. Yeah, that's true. That would not yeah. have been difficult. Do some animated tiles. Definitely getting annoyed with this complete... All right. Um... <laughs> yeah. oh, I have to listen to my own advice and actually save state here. They right, tended yeah. to be more fair uh, in that. What? Hold on. I'm doing good here, so I'll save state again. <laughs> be nice if you could do that in real life, you know. What? Beat the crap out of? Oh, save state. No, yeah, it's yeah. save state. Yeah, you know, just <laughs> yeah. reload and uh, definitely be like, what? Ooh, look, it's a tomorrow movie, movie or something. Yeah, man. Yeah, that would be fun. Um, all right. Oh, no, yeah, theoretically, yeah. all you, you need to do is drop kick her out of the air. There! <laughs> Safe state. That's an awesome death. <laughs> yes. Oh. I love how you because don't... of the... Sp she looks beheaded. I love how because of the sprite limitations, the right. characters get drastically shorter when they lay down. <laughs> Another thing that annoys me that's yeah. very arbitrary is when you jump in the air, punch does absolutely nothing for no reason. They have the art on uh -huh. the sprite so that you should be able to jump punch, which is perfectly valid, 
And even if you can't, all right, uh, even if you can't jump punch, just make the punch button do a kick as well. There's no right. reason to punish someone for trying to have control over his human body and press an attack button to attack. Right. And having your player feel like a that's trying to do a very <laughs> basic human thing uh, that they yeah. really need to do that makes perfect sense. Um, you know, those are not the reasons you should take damage or lose the game because suddenly you had no control of your arms because you were in the air and you pressed the arm attack button. Yes! <laughs> Victory. Nice. Uh, yeah, belated uh, epilepsy warning, everyone. I hope uh, everyone's still <laughs> with us and okay. That wasn't a consideration back then. So why does this guy? He doesn't die. He just. He, who who knows know. what really happened in the uh, fist of the North Star? Like, there's a very slight palette fade at the end, but it's only to his vest. Was he supposed to like petrify and turn to a statue for no reason? Maybe it no looked idea. like a victory pose. I know, know? Like, that's yeah. that's exactly. The, I felt the same way when I was a kid. I was like, "What the hell is that?" Like, now I have not played this level yet, so. But for some reason, now you are compelled to play. Right. <sighs> Nice. It might be worth the safe state, got the invulnerability. Your body nice. parts flying. I wonder if you can punch the flame. Let's try. Defend yourself? I don't think so, no. <laughs> right. You know, it, this it's the situations where I'm not moving and I'm standing still and they, um... Yeah. Two days later in our previous recording. I wasn't fully prepared for these last two boss fights, and what we decided to do is I took the time to practice, but I recorded this on my own, and we're just going to kind of voice over the rest of this. So uh, tough to learn the pattern initially, and the internet was not a thing back then. Right, so right. it was really a uh, huge amount of trial and error. There was the sort of sensibility of game design back then, uh, especially for action game design, it was all about the game designers having a really specific pattern in mind, a very specific way that a thing you needed to do to beat the, the boss or a given enemy or a level. Two hours later. And then the other thing that's annoying with her, they gave her attack box when she's doing her aerial attack. They made mm -hmm. her attack box too big so even on many times when you should be getting a hit in, especially like what really annoyed me fighting her is on several occasions, I did what should have been a nice, graceful and strategic backward jump kick, mm -hmm. which should be the perfect way to attack her. If she jumps in at you, jumping backward and then kicking her in the face as she's moving into it is the very logical and elegant counterattack. Right. But that doesn't work because her collision box is so big. Even when you're jumping backwards and you press kick to attack her, you get hit before she does. So well, she doesn't get hit at all because her giant attack box intercepts uh, you in the air. Um, yeah, yeah. Like you almost have to. And I think when I finally get it in, she is kicking. But yeah. and it's so fast. You right. don't have much time to react and get up there. Yeah. And it, really hit her, you know. It, it really is that split second twitch muscle memory. It's you have to be very aggressive. When she's in the air, you immediately have to do like a super jump forward, like right mm -hmm. into her, what should be right into her drop kick. You know what I mean? But right. but that works. But gracefully jumping backward and kicking doesn't work. There you go. See, that, that time it somehow worked, but it, you know, mm -hmm. I, that was 
I, I don't know. Like, I still expected to get hit that time when yeah. I did it. So. <laughs> Like, you just can't figure out why attacks hurt Wen for Rita. But right. with Wang, even though he's tough and he's fast and his attacks are long range and all that stuff, uh, he just felt so much more fair and more like a modern fighting game enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, so I enjoyed fighting him. The, the full videos or, you know, the, the eventual video I'm going to edit together for the public... Um, I used to play this game for those, uh, you know, I'm probably going to keep in the part where I mentioned this. Oh, see the there. I yeah, have nice juggling. Yeah. Very nice. I still defeated me that time, too. That's a shame. Yeah, it, it's amazing sometimes when you're a kid and you've got that time. Yeah, exactly. Uh, how, how good you can get at some of these games. I, I remember replaying some older games I had played as a kid, and I, I, I suck at them now. You yeah. Know? And, uh, and I was like, how did I, how did I almost beat this game as a yeah. kid? You know, it, it's amazing. Well, yeah, and that, that's the funny thing. Like, that's the perfect time to to be able to build up that muscle memory. You have the time and you have the reflexes, which only get slower with age, and uh, you're um, potentially more accepting of game logic, so to speak. Especially us now, we're so spoiled with modern game design that's going to be a lot more rational. Like, mm -hmm. you know, collisions will function as collisions. If you get an attack in, it's likely to work. And, and uh... there's sort of the bragging rights that come with the old games, you know, uh, yeah. that w when you master them and you master them well, you you get a extra sense of uh, accomplishment out of it. You know, you feel yeah. very satisfied that you were able to do it. Yeah. We can look back and even games that were made, you know, a couple of years ago that do something really well, we can still integrate those things into games that we create yeah so that's the great thing games, yeah. you know exactly so. like that, that's what we're doing at bitbeam cannon with metro siege and with uh damon claw i mean all our other games after those two are done is taking the great feelings and the nostalgia of these retro games and applying where it benefits the game the higher standards that evolved over time right just making the visual communication more clear making it more fair and to me, I want our games to have more of that challenging aspect that classic console and arcade games have, but without the cheap aspect. If you're clearly hitting the character, it should do damage. And if it's not, there should be very clear uh, visual and audio feedback letting you know you're not doing damage. And there's actually some kind of reason why that at least makes sense in the context of that game. I think you can really have the best of both worlds and make retro games that feel really authentic, but eliminate the chance for a lot of the frustration that can come with the fact that they had a different sensibility back then and different standards for that kind of thing. Like it was much less common to hear, oh, what cheap gameplay design, like you hear right. that all the time these days. And people were very willing to accept them as very abstracted. And even though it was a quote unquote fighting game, they just accepted the fact that it was all about learning and memorizing the specific patterns that might not have anything to do with combat that the game designer had in mind when they designed the gameplay for that level or that boss fight. Right, right. But anyway, yeah, good job beating it, making it through the frustrating rounds of Rita being a, an indestructible tank, the hardest, <laughs> the hardest boss in the game. Right. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I guess uh, we can end it there unless you have any other final thoughts. Uh, no, I believe that's it. Thanks so much, and uh, we'll see you again soon with another video.